we're actually trying to bring the country back to smaller government, uh, less government interference, less control. Let it up to the people. Let them make their own decisions. We don't need the government keeping me safe from myself. I mean, next thing you know, with the drugs, then they're going to say it's okay to tell me I can't have fast food because they're going to protect me from getting fat because I don't have the willpower to stop myself from eating fast foods. You know, I don't need the government telling me what's good and what I can't do. Uh, they also have the thing where they want to call us like drug pushers. Like, because I'm advocating for cannabis, that I actually want people using cannabis, that I'm pushing cannabis. I don't, I'm not pushing any drugs on anybody. I don't ask you to do drugs. I'm not promoting the use of drugs. I'm not promoting the use of cannabis. If you use it, use it. I don't care. Uh, I want you to use it safely and responsibly. I don't want you driving. I don't want you giving it to kids. I mean, that's, you know, not what we're uh, fighting for. We're fighting for the responsible use of adults, not the use of children. And right now, children are being put at risk because the control and regulation and distribution is all in the hands of black market criminals right now. So if we control it and regulate it, kids will actually have a harder time getting it, just like alcohol and cigarettes. Uh, I also wanted to kind of bring up the effects it has about uh, cannabis and our Constitution, because it really does affect our Constitution. Amendment 1, the free speech. Uh, notice our, our freedoms are kind of being censored about speaking out on such. When people look at uh, cannabis, when we try to say, speak out for it, they like to try to censor it. They don't like us to advertise it. Uh, it's when I put up uh, banners and stuff, trying to promote legalization, I often see them taken down. And they don't do that with any other uh, issue that I've seen. I don't see people tearing down banners if, if you want to try to change laws on anything else other than drugs and cannabis, and I don't understand why. Uh, cannabis and drugs should be a medical issue, not a legal issue. Uh, prohibition is just not working. Cops are just not keeping it out of the hands of children. So we need to change it to make it work. Uh, the Second Amendment right, they like to take, uh, in the medical marijuana states, they like to take the guns out of the hands of the uh, medical marijuana users, even though they're allowed to use it in their state legally. Uh, they like to label the marijuana users as drug abusers just because they're using it. Well, that's as absurd as you getting into an accident and you're getting a prescription for codeine. Codeine is an opiate, it's a narcotic, but yet they allow you to use that and not take away your right to own a firearm because you're under the effects of an opiate. Exactly, and that's one of the things we got to change. Uh, Amendment four: unreasonable search and seizure. Uh, you wouldn't tell, you wouldn't believe how many people tell me that they get pulled over on suspicion of anything, and they look at how you're dressed or, or stereotyped or whatever, and then they want to sit there and bring a drug sniffing dog. You know, they want you to actually wait there, and until they can get a drug sniffing dog. And how is that not against the Fourth Amendment? You know which is undo search and seizure. You know. One of the things you got to say and keep in mind is, uh, say, officer, I do not consent to a search of any kind, and am I free to go? You need to remember these things, because that's how it affects your Fourth Amendment. Uh, Amendment 5, the, the self-incrimination and you know, law enforcement cooperation. They want you to give up your right to remain silent. They want you to incriminate yourself. Uh, and that, you know, like I said, is against the Fifth Amendment. Uh, Eighth Amendment, they excessive bails, excessive fines, and cruel and unusual punishment. Cannabis laws have excessive fines, excessive punishments, and everything else. This is a non-toxic weed. It's a non-toxic herb that won't kill anybody. It hasn't killed anybody, and yet some of the fines are just ridiculous, and how long they punish people is, is ridiculous, and they'll take away uh, 
government housing, food stamps, you know, all, on, all to keep you safe from a drug that can just give you a cough. when you're testing for cannabis, exactly, when they test for cannabis, they're not really testing to see if you're under the influence. These cannabis tests, te uh, they actually get the inactive metabolites, which are the ingredients that show that you've used it. They don't show you're actively under the effects. It's not like a blood alcohol test, where they can actually tell if you're under the influence of alcohol. These uh, cannabis tests, all they detect is the metabolite, which means you've already used it. It's gone. The metabolites they test is a carboxy THC. And that shows you used it. It's not showing you're under the influence of it. So yeah, these tests are just ridiculous because it doesn't prove any level of impairment at all. And yet they think this is some kind of answer. I mean, they like to push these tests. Yes? Yes, they do. They have tests if you have uh, any level of delta-9 THC, which is the active psychoactive ingredient. Yes, that would show impairment. They could. They could. Yes. They could. They don't, but they could. And that's the problem with some of these drug testing things. You can actually have clear urinalysis. Uh, let, let me put it this way. You can, you can use it, come up dirty, uh, piss and come up clean, and then actually have another dirty urinalysis after it. And it's like you said, it's how your body metabolizes and excretes the byproduct and it's stored in the fat. And so if you do a heavy workout or whatnot, all of a sudden a lot more of the uh, carboxy THC is released and then they can pick it up and it looks like you smoked, even though you didn't. body excretes the metabolite and like it, it, it doesn't show any impairment that's what's really unjust about these uh, hair analysis tests they don't show impairment all they show is that you've used it you know so what if you used it if it's not impairing you at the time what's the problem That is a test, and that is more accurate, and that would be more acceptable than the urinalysis test, which, like I said, they can show whether you've had it within the last 30 days, not whether you're impaired. So a test like that would be a much better test for people to be using. Most. 